Hello everyone. Today we will be covering the topic BCG metrics which is a strategic measurement tool used in continuation to PLC uh, which was the topic of discussion in our previous video. Now what is BCG metrics? Uh, the full form of BCG metrics is derived from the parent company that proposed this metrics which is Boston Consultancy Group, hence the name BCG. Now since it is a matrix, it is a four quadrant uh, matrix which maps products, brands across uh, different quadrants on the basis of their revenue share and on the basis of the growth which they contribute to a company's overall performance. Since uh, this matrix is used to study multiple brands under the umbrella of a parent brand at the same time, uh, this is a great long-term strategic tool that helps managers decide whether to keep on investing in a certain brand or divest, what is the future business potential from a given brand or what is the current growth rate and how it can be maintained or improved over a period of time. Now uh, what are these four quadrants? which are part of the BCG matrix. These uh, four quadrants are given very typical names uh, which denote the type of performance which the product has in a given quadrant. These quadrants are called cash cow, star, dog and question mark. Now as the name depicts a cash cow product or the product that falls in this quadrant is that product that is giving the company a sustained revenue with very minimal growth. Now as is the case with the cow, once it is fully grown, it continues to give milk for a sustained period of time. Therefore, cash cow products are a typical way of a company to maintain its position, its brand in a given market. Next type of quadrant is called star products. Now star products as the name suggests are the celebrity, the star, the top performers in a given company's product portfolio. Now these products as the name indicate are growing very fast. So they are growing, they are reaching to the next peak of the market but the uh, revenue currently being contributed by them may not be as large as a cash cow product. So since they are reaching new levels of performance every year, eventually these star products can become cash cow products for a company. Then we have dog products. Now uh, obviously in certain cultures dogs can be celebrated as uh, the favored pets but in India obviously when you say dog, you are thinking of a underperformer, a low performer. So uh, that is what the products which are listed in this quadrant are for a company. Dog products are not known for their best performance. They may have been good performer once upon a time but now their performance has declined. So they are in a degrowth stage, their revenue contribution to the company is very less and the company has to uh, make a decision. The managers who are handling these products, they have to make a decision should we keep investing in these products, maintaining them in market or should we simply divest from them. The last is the question mark quadrant. The products which fall under this category are usually recently launched products or products which are having some trouble with their performance. Now in terms of growth potential, it is usually positive. The company and the brand managers see a future growth future revenue to churn to be churned out of these product lines but currently their revenue con contribution is very less to minimum so it is uh, really something of a risk uh, taking situation for the managers to decide whether to continue to invest in a question mark product or go ahead and divest and simply exit the market now uh, we'll cover uh, each quadrant with an example and uh, we'll uh, try and discuss what are the various strategies which brands can adopt when a product is falling under a certain um, quadrant. So let's start with Cash Cow and let's start with the, the famous brand Hindustan Unilever. Now uh, HUL has a large portfolio of products in its uh, kitty but there are certain products which are doing very well, certain products which have been doing very well for the past decades and therefore have matured to become cash cow. So one such brand would be Brookbond Red Label. 
So we all heard of the brand. We have seen it in our household. We've seen it on supermarket shelves. We have seen the advertisements. The ad uh, innovation is also limited to maybe one creative campaign per year. Nothing special. Nothing special about the product has been launched in a long while, except perhaps the addition of the Ayurvedic factor in the past few years. Now this product is doing very well for the company and has a mature market. The uh, the product is adopted. Adopted by early and late majority both, as we learnt in the previous uh, PLC video. So uh, this product is giving sustained revenue to the company. The strategy which the company tends to adopt for such products is uh, limited, uh, limited investment in terms of marketing and branding, and maintaining of product performance by giving better service, maintaining. Product quality and coming out with intermittent offers, intermittent um, additional value uh, for the customer. Let's say 25% extra on the product, 5% off or 5 rupees off on the product, and the customer is happy to simply accept that as a value and go ahead with the product. The next type of uh, product, which is the uh, star product. Now these products uh, are as as we discussed earlier giving very positive revenue and growth to the company. So if we look at HUL's product portfolio, Surfixel is a great example. Now this product was launched originally in the 90s but uh, over a period of time it has uh, seen tremendous growth and is actually the best performer in the category for the company. You compare it with Ariel, you compare it with Tide, you compare it with um, Ghadi, Nirma, any other brand in this category and the brand enjoys a superior image. So uh, obviously when it is a star product, the company decides to keep on investing in bringing out new variants. So you see uh, machine friendly, washing machine friendly Surfixel and hand wash Surfixel, you see Surfixel liquid, you see Surfixel softeners. So new variants are launched, more investment is done and more frequent ad campaigns are done. So it's Da Gachche Hai campaign uh, was actually in launched and it has ensured the star status and position of the pro product in the company. The next quadrant is of course the dog products. The, um, we have been a nation of tea drinkers but coffee has also seen a kind of a surge in demand over uh, the past few decades and uh, when we think of coffee Indian customers largely prefer Nescafe we don't uh, demand for espresso we say give me a Nescafe so uh, in HUL's product portfolio the product called brew is currently a dog product because it is competing with a um, monopolistic giant in the segment which is Nescafe so while brew has been around for more than 20 years it has not been able to make that kind of impact on the market so it is an underperformer the company has tried to launch brew gold um, just in an effort to maybe position the product in a better manner but brew continues to remain an underperformer in its segment. The company can choose to now restrict its distribution to smaller markets uh, with one rupee sachet packaging or keep on continuing to sell it to B2B buyers who would not be really concerned about the brand, would be more concerned about the products that coffee should be there, instant coffee should be there. And that's what the company has been doing for the past few years now. The last quadrant which is the question mark uh, type of product uh, as we discussed are those which have been um, recently launched or uh, are actually enigmatic for the um, company, uh, they, they're not able to really decide what to be done with it. So uh, Taj Mahal tea bags is one such product in HUL's uh, product portfolio. When we talk of uh, tea consumption, uh, although we are a nation of tea drinkers, when we go to buy tea to a grocery store or to a supermarket, we buy a tea in bulk, in loose packaging because tea is made uh, in such a fashion that it is mixed with a host of spices, with milk and it is cooked for a period of time so integration of tea bag as a product into our daily consumption has never really happened 
we consume tea bags uh, in social settings when we are attending a conference or a party or somewhere outside in in, in a restaurant where we have no other option but to go ahead with a tea bag based tea consumption so taj mahal tea bags although launched many years back have still been not great performers in the market for the company now the company has invested in bringing out other variants um as in you have the lavender flavor uh, tea bag you have ginger you have green tea you have uh, cardamom and these variants are now being uh, launched by the company just to capture small niche segments in the um market which may be uh, finding tea bag as a value proposition a great deal so the company is still maintaining hopes that this segment although not performing very well right now can click in the future and be uh, a strong revenue contributor to the company's portfolio so that finishes bcg metrics as a concept next time we'll be covering another strategic tool which helps a company to decide how to perform well in the market and uh, contribute to its bottom line thank you so much